um, Renata. Uh, Pauline Boundary and Renata Lovelace. And they wrote this really lovely letter to this person where they were talking about the waves of feminism that they were sending out to other generations of women mm. to pick up on. Yeah. So when we're playing, like, try and like, feel the waves. Uh, we also really do. Isn't it funny? Isn't improvised music funny? It's really funny, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. And we also really dig Hacking Bay. Oh yeah, Hacking Bay is really cool. And he wrote this thing about wild children, and we just like wish that we were sort of like wild children. And um, yeah, he's got this thing about like they they speak in images, and there's like silver cords, and there's piss, and there's shit everywhere, and uh, you know. From whatever angle you approach it, the present offers no way out. This is not the least of its virtues. Though she seek hope above all, it tears away from every good ground. Though she claims to have solutions, are contradicted almost immediately. Everyone agrees that things can only get worse. The future has no future. It's the wisdom of an age that for all its appearance of perfect normalcy has reached a level of consciousness of the new cult. The sphere of political representation has come to a close. From left to right, it's the same nothingness striking the pose of an emperor or a savior. The same sales assistants adjusting their discourse according to the findings of the latest surveys. Those who still vote seem to have no other intention than to desecrate the passport by voting as a pure act of protest. We're beginning to suspect that it's only against voting itself that people continue to vote. Nothing we're being shown is adequate to the situation, not by far. It is very silent the popular seem infinitely more mature than all these puppets bickering among themselves about how to govern it. The ramblings of the Belleville humanity contain more wisdom than all the declarations of our so-called leaders. The lid on the social kettle is shut trip tight and the pressure inside continues to build. Our Argentinian the spectrum preset Mayan Toros is beginning to seriously haunt the ruling class. The flames of November 2005 still flicker in everyone's minds, those joyous triumphs for the baptism of a decade full of promise. The media fable of Bellevue versus the Republic may work, but it, what it gains in effectiveness, it loses in truth. Fires were lit in the city centres when this news was methodically suppressed. Whole streets in Barcelona burned in solidarity, but no one knew about it, apart from the people living there. And it's not even true that the country has stopped burning. Many different profiles can be found among the arrested, with little that unites them besides a hatred for existing society, not class, race, or even neighborhood. What was new wasn't the value revolt, since that was already going on in the 80s, but the break with its established form. These Italians no longer listen to anybody, neither to their big brothers or big sisters, nor to the community organization charged with overseeing the return to normal. The SOS racism can sink this cancerous roots into this event, whose apparent conclusion can be credited only to fatigue, falsification, and the media and matter. This whole series of nocturnal vandalisms and anonymous attacks, this wordless destruction that widens the bridge between politics and the political, no one can honestly deny the obvious. This was an assault that made no demand, a threat without a message, and it had nothing to do with politics. One would have to be oblivious to the autonomous youth movements of the last 30 years not to see the purely political character of this resolute negation of politics. Like lost children, we trash the prized trinkets of a society that deserves no more respect than the monuments of Paris at the end of the bloody week of November. There will be no potent solution to the present situation, first because the vague aggregate of social milieu, institutions and individualized bubbles, as it's called, with a touch of antipathy, society has no constituency. Second, because there's no longer any language for common experience. And we cannot share wealth if we do not share a common language. It took a half a century of struggle around the Enlightenment to make the French Revolution possible. And a century of struggle around working at birth with a fierce and well fed state. Struggle creates a language in which the new order expresses itself. But there is nothing like that today. Europe is now a continent that broke the job secretly at discussed stores and has to fly budget airlines if it wants to travel at all. No problems phrased in social terms admit it of a solution. The questions of pensions, of job security, of young people and their violence can only be held in suspense while the situation these words serve to cover up is continually policed for signs of further unrest. Nothing can make it an attractive prospect to wipe the answers of pensioners. Pleasure-seeking whores of 
As an attempt to loosen the pressure to ensure that nothing happens together with the police surveillance of the territory will only intensify. The unmanned drone that flew over St. Sien St. Denis last July 14th, as the police lady confirmed, presented much more vivid image of the future than all the fuzzy humanistic projections. So they were careful to assure us that the drone was the drone was unarmed, gives us a sense of clear that indication of the road we're headed down. The territory will be partitioned into ever more restricted zones. Highways built around the borders of Copeland neighbourhoods already form invisible walls, closing off those areas from the middle class subdivisions. Whatever defenders of the Republic may think, the control of neighbourhoods by the community is manifestly the most effective means available. The purely metropolitan sections of the country, the main city centres, will go about their opulent lives and ever more crafty, ever more sophisticated, ever more shimmering deep. They will illuminate the whole planet with their glaring neon lights as the patrols of the BNC and private security companies, i.e. the paramilitary units, proliferate under the umbrella of an increasingly shameless unit. 